in my view, biological systems operate by transferring signals, but not radio signals, I might add. They're direct electrical connections. And unless those connections are in real time, in other words, much faster than the speed of light, you will lose connection. So coherence requires that you have this signaling in real time. And this is the mind-body connection in my view. For instance, um, uh, I reckon that um, these tennis players, when you see them return a serve that's coming at well over 100 kilometres now towards them, if they had to rely on nerve signals travelling at metres a second, you know, from their eyes to their brain and down there to their arm, they'd be standing there with their, waving their racket in the air while the ball's gone past and the ball boy's picked it up. Uh, the signalling isn't fast enough. And also, if we are to be able to uh, explain things like, like extrasensory perception, that which seems that it doesn't seem to involve time or place, uh, you have to have this real-time connection. You have to have coherence. And so that's my view of the importance of coherence. It is absolutely fundamental to the operation of the universe. You can't have beautiful spiral galaxies. Uh, you can't have a solar system that works like clockwork. You can't have Newton's law without coherence. So it's that basic. Thank you for doing that. What do you envision the electric universe cosmology potentiating in the realm of discovery for humanity? I've called it um, childhood's end in the universe. In other words, we'll grow up. <laughs> <laughs> One of the... Because it came from uh, Velikovsky's work initially um, and his delving into all of the religions and myths and so on around the world about an age when the gods were in control and hurling thunderbolts in the sky and the heavens and the universe was staring, uh, sorry, mankind was staring annihilation in the face. This is where our doomsday fear comes from. When we under, actually understand this, we can be released from the bonds of the past. These are Velikovsky's words. He said, we still behave like traumatized individuals who have suffered from some uh, life-threatening event in our lives and we suppress the memory. And the problem then is that the memory is relived in vicarious ways by either visiting it on someone else, you know, dropping bombs on them, uh, or by um, irrational behavior. And, I mean, you've only... You don't have to look very far to see our irrational behavior. So he felt that our salvation from that continued um, insane behavior on the part of the human race required that we truly understand our past. Now, the electric universe, one of the problems that Velikovsky faced was that he couldn't explain, although he had some very good ideas, and he, I visited him at his home in Princeton before he died, and he put me onto this notion of the electrical nature of gravity. Uh, he, he couldn't explain why um, Newton's law didn't give us a stable clockwork solar system in historic or prehistoric times because the astronomers just stood on their pulpit and said uh, it's impossible because Newton's laws forbid it. Well, of course, we don't really understand Newton's law fully and I explain that in some of my work. But... Um, it was this dismissal of all of this evidence that the ancients tried to provide for us that there was something really serious going on in the solar system only a few thousand years ago. Uh, by discarding that, they missed the opportunity to understand the origins of religions. And when we begin to understand these things, we can then begin to heal from the wounds that we suffered facing annihilation globally, you know, the earth dying. Um, it would help us understand our present um, fear of uh, global warming, which is irrational because uh, humankind, our input into the global warming is Minuscule. absolutely infinitesimal. The sun is the center of the uh, energy focus in our solar system. It's the sun we have to look at and, and be concerned about because it's an electrical phenomenon. It is not fueled by internal, uh, by consuming itself. So we need to look at nearby stars and what's going on out in space. So uh, it's these fundamental issues that the human race has to address in order to grow up, in my opinion, and become sane members of the universe. <laughs>
But then I think we have a very important role to play in learning the real nature of the universe and uh, understanding ourselves better, life and what life means. And I think it has a lot to say about um, uh, the intelligence inherent in the universe and we're part of that intelligence. I think it's a very hopeful uh, future. Of course, there are all sorts of other things like uh, anti-gravity uh, may be possible because, although difficult, uh, it, it should be possible because it's an electrical force. Um, our energy sources, there are energy sources available to us which we uh, dismiss at present because it doesn't fit our paradigm um, and which would make life very easy for us. So there are all kinds of um, benefits down the, down the road, but we first of all have to get rid of all of these myths and legends and fairy stories that uh, underpin our present science. I'm very honored to have you on the show, and I so appreciate what you're sharing with us. Anything else you'd like to tell us? If I can just enthuse people enough to go to our websites, um, thunderbolts.info, we have a, a, a great range of wonderful people now who assist us for no income. <laughs> they do it out of the love of it and the love of discovery, because we all feel like pioneers out there on the frontier. It's, it's good fun. Um, if, they can, if people can go to thunderbolts.info or my website, uh, polarscience.info, uh, uh, then uh, I'd be very happy because the more people we can get involved, this is a, really at the point of trying to build the network. It's a network of people who are very interested and concerned to try and spread this information, particularly to younger people. Thank you so much for being on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been talking with, learning from, and listening to Wallace Thornhill, the co-author of the book, The Electric Universe and Thunderbolt of the Gods. I hope you'll join us again. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Wallace.